so what we're doing today, um, or how we'll get started, is uh, the way you would get started in a recording session is first, first after you have everything set up, first thing to do is check the levels. Um, but the difficulty with that, with these machines, is unlike modern machines where you have level meters, you have the lights or bars waving back and forth, there's no way to check the levels other than just trial and error. There are no, there are no loudness meters on these machines. Um, so that's what we're going to start off with, just, just a one or two loudness tests to get the balance correct. Um, I was just giving uh, my best guess at what might be a good starting point. Uh, you know, I said probably the keyboard needs to be up a little louder. We'll see. We don't know until we hear it. Um, I will quickly describe how the recording machine works. Um, so uh, Ed is going to play um, and sing. And we're cheating a little bit because we're not using a big acoustic piano like you see in some of these photos flashing behind me. Um, we use a keyboard um, played through an amp. The amp is supplying the acoustic energy. So it's still an acoustic recording. There's no direct input. Um, and uh, when Ed starts to make his sound, playing and singing, what's going on, when you ever make any sound in a room, what's going on is you're disturbing the air molecules in the room. They, they, they react to that. And they, they start to vibrate and knock into one another and they cr create compressions and rarefactions. Um, in a waveform, so they create this, this wave of sound pressure. And so um, Ed is going to, to direct his sound. We have the amp focused right here, and he's going to sing right here, right to the center of the horn. Um, so we're trying to get that, that, that uh, sound energy funneled into the horn. You see the horn starts off big, and the other end is small. Why, why is that? The reason for that is this is the end that captures the sound, so you want it, you want it to be uh, bigger. Um, but sound pressure itself, is, it's not a really uh, powerful thing. So we need to increase the pressure. So that's the purpose of the horn, is it, is it captures that sound pressure, and then as it's pushing in this direction, you see it gets smaller, 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 smaller and that increases, so it's, it's really loud once you get down here. If you were to shout in this horn and I put my ear on the other hand, I'd probably damage my hearing. Literally. Uh, okay, so attached to the other end of the, the small end of the horn is this piece here we call it the cutter. It's called a cutter because it's literally a knife. Um, in between the cutter and the end of the horn is, is a, a little, what we call a diaphragm. Um, it's kind of like a small drum head. Uh, so as Ed is making his sounds, and, and the sound pressure is, is beating in this direction, it's, it starts to, the diaphragm reacts, it starts to vibrate in sympathy with the sound vibrations. Um, when Ed's gonna play a high note, it's gonna shake quickly because, uh, you ever heard the term high frequency? That means high pitch. It's very literal with the phonograph. Kind of record, that's very literal. High frequency, what that means is, uh, the, the high-pitched notes are going to cause the diaphragm to shake back and forth very frequently, so high frequency. Um, low notes um, are slower, slower moving sound vibrations, so it's going to cause the diaphragm to shake uh, uh, slower, low, low fre less frequently. Um, okay, so the knife is going to cut into this. This is um, called a cylinder blank. I'm not yet going to call it a record because um, there's no sound on it. The word record or recording is just a word that means document. So we're going to document sound on this blank and then, then it's going to be called a record. Uh, the material here is um, called, nickname for it is called brown wax. So that's what you usually would call it. Uh, it's not literally wax though. If you ask uh, one of the lab technicians, they would say, it's, it's called metallic soap. It's, it's a soap making, making process. Mm. One of the main ingredients is uh, animal fats, like uh, I think they use cow and pig fat, actually, uh, to make this special type of soap. Um, and what's special about it? Special about it is you can, you can shave it nice and smooth. You see that it has that glassy smoothness. You want that for quietness, because any roughness on the surface is going to come out as sound on the phonograph. Uh, so, but it, it also 
is soft enough to cut into, yet hard enough to hold its shape. So that's what's special about this material. Um, all right, so that's a quick overview of the recording process. I'm going to hand the blank over to Michael. And our goal today, the next half hour or so, is to, we want to get two good takes. Uh, we have some limitations. The, the recordings uh, only hold a certain amount of time. You, you, you just run out of space on the record. Uh, these cylinders are, are uh, a little bit longer than, than your usual cylinder. We're running them at uh, 160 RPM, but they're a bit longer than the type that Edison used. This is a, a replica cylinder. Um, and the extra length gives us a little extra time, a little extra time in which the musicians are already all, always appreciative of. Appreciative of. So we're going to start off with a test. I mentioned this is our, our level test. We're just going to see if uh, we have enough sound going to the, to the phonograph to, to create the sound coming out of the phonograph. Um, if it's too quiet of a sound, it just won't register. It won't cut in very far. Um, but there's kind of a window. If it's too loud of a sound, and you're just banging the diaphragm with pressure, um, there's only so far it can stretch when it's shaking back and forth. So at a certain point, it'll just stop. And uh, he, uh, an audio engineer would call that clipping. And again, um, very literal. What's happening? The knife is just clipping off the top of the wave. Uh, all right, so let's let's give it a shot. So should I be treating this as a possible take, or do you just want to No, this is just a test. OK. But to just, it, so you can hear what like it sounds like. like 30 seconds or so? OK. So but you would like your we do it like it's for real, in other words, you know, full Yeah, row. same full yeah. voice. But it doesn't have to yeah. be a whole Right. Yeah, there's like 30 seconds. All oh, right. Yeah, I'll basically, I, I start the machine, I like to let it go for about two seconds. I'll just go like that towards you. you know, so when I go you like do this, I start? Start and I'll go like that again or some weird thing and that will be stopped. Clear enough. Or I'll lift up the recorder and you're not going to, you will hear a little bit of uh, okay. yeah. sound. Okay, so I'm going to start the machine. And I'm going to set it down. Get my magic brush. Go. No. Uh, 
the balance between the keys and the, the keyboard and the vocal. So I'm going to power up the machine. The way I do that is by turning this crank, cranking it up. That doesn't refer to loudness, though. What I'm doing is um, there's a spring motor inside of here that powers what turns the record. Uh, they call it a clockwork motor. It's like an old clock that you wind up. So that's what I'm doing when I'm turning and tightening the spring. Uh, next, I'll, I'll release the brake on that spring, which gets the record turning. You see, it's by pulley. And uh, next part of playback is I'm going to lower the stylus. Both machines have, di have horn, diaphragm, stylus. On here, it's called a cutter because it's a knife. On this machine, instead of a knife, um, it's, a, it's, it's a round ball. The knife is round, kind of like an ice cream scoop, so it cuts a, cuts a, a, a kind of like an hourglass shaped groove, like if you scoop into ice cream. Um, the stylus on this machine is a polished ball of the same diameter, so it's not going to cut. It's going to sit in the groove and then ride over the groove, those ups and down wave form, hills and dales. Um, and that's going to get this diaphragm shaking. Um, in the, in the same waveform pattern that we captured on the recorder. And uh, that's going to excite these air molecules at the bottom of the horn. And then the horn, uh, the, instead of the sound going in, the sound's going to come out. So the horn, in this case, acts as an acoustic amplifier. So let's give it a shot. We might need to start it in a little bit more. Yeah, I'm just trying to give you what notes. Okay, here we go. This, this, is, this is for real now. There's um, another test. We just wanted to... Are we still testing? Yeah, just do it. Pretty much just yeah, do like 15 seconds. Okay. Yeah. I'll that do was the same. Fine. I'll do the same. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay, sorry.
flat cylinders very old, or are these made? These, uh, what I'm using today are new replicas. There's a guy out in Illinois who, uh, the, the, the actual historic formula was, was proprietary. They kept it secret, like, like classic Coke. Oh. It's a secret <laughs> recipe. Um, but there's a certain amount you can learn by studying the, the notebooks that we have here on the, in the collection that are up online. So he studied, went back and studied the experimental notebooks and just tried it out and tried different formulas and came up with a really good result. Is it still made with animal fat? What's that? Is it still made with animal fat? I think so. I'll have to ask him. I think he buys, you know, materials. And, and he's it, right? The guy in Illinois is. That's the only guy in the world. There's another guy in England who's, uh, but I like the, his, the Illinois one's better. Richard oh, he's a, just better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give this music. Yeah. Uh, you know, naturally, there's a temptation to try to do something new and see how it comes out old, but nah. Uh, so I figured it was either like Jeepers Creepers and stuff like that or some old blues. So we're going with the old blues. Uh, the, song, the song I just played in part was written by a guy named Joseph Pleasant, who is better known as Cousin Joe from New Orleans. And he recorded in the 40s. On to 78s, of course, so it's a similar fidelity situation. Once we're going for real, I'm going to do a different Cousin Joe song than the one you heard. Are you, are you ready? Am I ready? Are you ready? I am ready. You look ready. Okay, so we're good. We'll have the same intro. Okay, so I got the machine going. Take with 
dream of daytime. And I just walk away and grin. What's she doing at nighttime? Covering up to a scene. Steady kind of oh, okay, okay. vinyl surface noise, like they try to replicate these oh. days. You know, <laughs> well, you can't this was the that real deal, though. Okay. Yeah. I could see the little horn come by. So this is what's coming at you out of this horn. Wow. And this That's the, uh, the cylinder with the shavings. So cool. The technical word for the shavings is swarf. Believe it or not. What's called swarf? S W A R F. Perfect. Was this near the yeah. end of the time? You are. You were right at the, you were within seconds. I figured, yeah. Wow. All right. Because the original, the original record is like 240. Right. And I did it a little faster, so I was. And that was like 218. Okay. Yeah. You don't know exactly how much is going to yeah. go on there, right? Yeah, it's tricky. Um. <laughs> okay, got it. It's difficult to even start it. Close to the starting edge. Um, so it's not precise. All right, let's give this a go, and at the end, let us know if we got a good take.
modern ones are really rare. We have a few in the collection, but we don't use them. We keep them pristine or used. Um, but uh, I have a local one maker make that for me. Uh, the machines are, are both, um, this one's from 1906. This one's from 1908. And this is a pretty early one, too. Actually, this is an original one. Yeah, this is an original one. Wow. That's the replica. That's yeah. the replica. That's kind of yes. obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. May I ask how you got into this specialty? Long time ago. Oh, how? Got bit by the bug. Yeah. And uh, used to go to the Salvation Army when I was a kid, you know, literally buy a stack of records for a couple of bucks. I'm talking mm -hmm. ancient history here. Yeah. Um, I think I paid a dollar fifty for my first photograph. This is out in beautiful Portland, Oregon, where they didn't have the you didn't have the photograph industry out there. So you, there really wasn't anything that was older than 1910 or 1915 out there, which to a lot of collectors is new. So, no, I just got bit by the bug when I was a kid. Quite a few people I know of the same generation, same thing. It all started when they were 13, 14 years old. So I'll leave it at that. Song. This is the second song. Yeah. Were you happy with it? You like that thing? Yeah. It's the song about the woman with the speech impediment. You think the level on the piano is okay? I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. Balance. Yeah, I thought the balance was all right. <laughs> you really can't go much louder. Um, you pretty much, I'm going to start clipping if I, you're like minus 3 dB type of, okay. you know, minus actually half dB. You know. okay. You're right there. That's all fine. right. Because you need, you need the energy in the cylinder to get it back out. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's plenty loud, so no, you're doing great. Okay. Give us a couple of points. Okay, I got the machine on. I just gotta find my spot here. Okay, I'm gonna set it down.
Oh, so that got recorded, the applause, so it's like a live recording. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From 1908. <laughs> Yeah, that's not, that's not, uh, it's kind of historically accurate to have a, a clause at the end because I think in the early days of the recording industry, they wanted it to sound and, and like it was a live event. They wanted to replicate the live event. So what they would do if they had a big band, they'd have the band cheer at the end. So it sounded like <laughs> You could, you could, Edison was doing some dubbing from cylinder to disc, but there were really two different formats. Um, I'll jump in for a second. The disc world was really a different world. Yeah. Um, it was a totally different recording process. <coughs> Very easily duplicable. It's like making a waffle. And cylinders were trickier, and it wasn't until 1902 they were able to actually mold cylinders. Um, interesting process. I won't go into it, but uh, so they were different worlds. So how long was were they making the cylinders versus the the stick record things? Well, so, so Edison was in cylinder business. And quite a while. Um, Edison made diamond disc. Well, Edison went out of the photograph business in 1929. I'll set it so we can see this. I was just trying to clarify the point. All right, here we go.